Milk chocolate. Do you actually know how it's made? Because I've found that most people actually have no idea. I mean, do you know where a cashew comes from? Did you know it's this weird little thing that hangs on top of a fruit? There's so many foods out there where people just don't even think about where they come from. But that's why I'm here today. And I'm gonna show you exactly how all of our favorite candy is made. But to start, this stuff right here is no good. Now, we're gonna make it ourselves. But first, let's go grab some cacao pods, the fruit where chocolate comes from. Oh, one thing we forgot to mention, we're actually flying all the way to Ecuador to pick up the cacao pods ourselves. We do it big here, so I'll see you in Ecuador. So we are in fact in Ecuador now. We touched down late last night, so I didn't want to film anything, but we're gonna get a quick cup of coffee right now. Here we have the omita. The omita is like a Mexican tamal. Okay. It's made with corn and with cheese. It's sweet and it's uh, very common to have it here for breakfast or okay. for lunch. Wow. I usually have it for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, yeah. <laughs> and for a late night time. I love yeah. it so much. Quick little last stop for some coconut water, then we're at the cacao farm. And how, how long till the cacao farm? 15 minutes. We're almost there. Perfect. Okay. Let's drink some coconut water. Okay. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. So we finished the coconut, now they're gonna open it up so we can eat the flesh on the inside. Wow. Gracias, thank you so much. This reminds me more of, of me and then right there is Manny. <laughs> it's messed up. Start with the flour. You hit the small pot, it's one week. So this is the stage one. We have six wow. stages. This is stage one. This is stage two. Okay. Over there, if you, if you can take a picture, you see the stage yeah, three and four and five. Every day we harvest in the morning and... Wow. Now you see the big, the size. This no, is 50 m, 50 m, 50 watt. Try, try some machete here. No. Can, I, can I open it? Sure, but it's yeah. difficult. Look. So, Look like oh. oh, is that okay? Yeah, confirm. Cool. Manny, take, take a picture. Yeah. You see? Now you can taste it. For you, Nick. Many. Here you have the pulp, you have the bean, and you have the husk. From the husk today, we prepare the flour. The pulp, it can be the pulp, freeze pulp, or uh, aseptic pulp. Yeah. And from the pulp, we can take the liquid and make the juice, okay? And inside, we have the bean. So good. Yeah. You see the bean? If it's not fermented, it's purple. So when we talk about the ruby, now you can understand the color. It's natural. As you continue to grow, you get those massive, big, thick boys back there. That's cool. So we are here right now in Ecuador, like like we said. We started out in Boston, I'm gonna make some milk <laughs> chocolate. But this year is my good buddy, Oded, who, is it fair to say you're, you're Willy Brenner. Wonka? You're, Will, you're basically Willy Wonka, right? Yeah. The reincarnated Willy Wonka? <laughs> exactly. I actually have a, a picture here. Is I lost my hair, I got older. Do you see any resemblance? Well. Anything here? I lost my hair. Is there during anything? Like, I mean, they told me that Cacao actually grows your hair, but I don't know, I ate too much probably. He is the modern day Willy Wonka. You didn't believe me the chocolate doesn't grow on trees. The chocolate is a fruit. I wanted to take you here to the farm in Ecuador where we can really see there's no chocolate bar on a tree. It's a fruit, actually an unbelievable fruit, delicious. We're it's gonna beautiful. describe it, so many colors. You know, always what's weird to me is that this, this looks ripe, but it's not yet. No. You're gonna see when it does it's ripe. look ripe. I would think yeah. it's ripe. But um, in the middle of the, the process of ripening, yeah. then it's becoming red and yellow. Um, there are different varieties of cacao. You know that Criollo, or here in, in, in Ecuador, they call it Arriba Nacional. It's a very, very expensive cacao. Look different than this one. For that also, many different types of chocolate, flavors, nuances of the taste. Anything you need to know about chocolate, <laughs> he's your guy. Don't open it with your hand. Oh, I was so ready to karate chop it. You can try it, but uh, we will take you to the hospital. Yeah. Now, you see the difference? Oh, wow, look, look at all the... The size, you see the... The hot? sap. Manny, go ahead. You can take a little bit. It's okay. Sure? Yeah, yeah, you won't no. be fired. You're fired. No. <laughs> the moment you cut it from the tree, it's like the umbilical of, of the mother. Starts fermentation. Now, when you eat it... Uh, uh. <laughs> Let's see. Here you can see the evolution. How, why human beings are so close to the monkey? It's like, that's the closest you can see. That's the closest evidence of a monkey. He's eating the whole seed, the whole thing. It's in your hand. I love, I love cacao. 
I see love it. I love it. Four hundred dollar bar. Because they make it from this. They make a four hundred dollar chocolate bar from these pots. <laughs> Look. Ah, oh. This is a disease. Oh. Disease. Okay. Yeah. Tom Brady is it's throwing this one to a dead <laughs> in the Super Bowl. That that would should be that. That should be a yeah, commercial. It's, it's actually like a football. A little spiral. Yeah. The flavor of this is, I can't even begin to describe it. Right off the trees, it's like a little bit gooey, but it's almost like a carbonated taste and texture with like citrusy, sweet, almost a little lemony. I don't even know how to describe it, but it's incredible. Look at that. Amazing. Crazy to think that this turns into chocolate, right? He's too fast. He's too fast. He's too fast. Yeah. So they have three massive farms here. There's fields literally just go on forever and it's just tree after tree after tree, all super packed together. You have this perfect little cute building in the middle of nowhere, right? And then all these massive, massive companies that all of us know and eat all the time, they're all using this to make chocolate. Yo, cut the, cut the cams first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First. yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Oh. This is La Chola Farm, it belongs to Mars. Yeah. This is where M&M's come from. Yeah. Look at that entrance sign right there. Biggest cacao pod ever. So if you look back right behind me, this is a whole water reservoir. Oftentimes if the, the guy that runs the whole city, town's water isn't paid, he'll just go and turn off the switch. He'll just turn off the knob and then you're stuck with that water. So they have all these backup supplies. Now we're gonna see that second stage of the process where they're fermenting and they're drying because that's when you're getting closer to the actual final product that we all know. Chocolate. So, so the way they keep the trees going, because they're harvesting 25,000 pods or more a day on each farm, right? Here you can see this is an old tree. This is 20 years old right here, okay? And you have all these pods and they're still small, but they're growing. And then you already have the second one that they're having grow off the side of it. And what they'll eventually do, this is brand new, what they'll eventually do is they'll chop this tree off after they harvest all the pods off the tree, right? And then they'll pull this one up and this will be the new tree. And then a new one will come out of this tree and keep going. So that's the way they keep the cycle going, which is really, really cool. So we finally made it to the drying process here. And now it smells like chocolate. And here's where we're gonna get closer and closer to chocolate. Look at this, all chocolate. Oh wow, they smell really yeah, fer fermented. fermented. <laughs> wow. Look right down here. Now it's all laid out. They've taken the seeds out of the cacao pods and they're all really slimy and gooey and this is how we've been eating them the whole day. So they lay it out at the start of the process and this is when they begin to ferment. So now look at the gradient over here. So we have the later colors that start to ferment and then if you slowly look up, it starts to get darker and darker and darker as that, as that fermentation process happens. It's amazing. So eventually it's fermented, right? And then you have this, you have these dried beans and they're hot and they're hard, right? And that's when they pack it up in these big bags right here. And this is what would get shipped to a factory like Mars that's gonna go ahead and take these and make chocolate out of it. So that's that process. And you can see that if I pick up a couple of these here and I crack this one open just like this. Inside here, I'm gonna have cacao nibs, which you may have seen on top of a smoothie or something like that. But this ground into a fine paste is what would eventually make a chocolate bar. Crazy, right? He pretty much goes back and forth and yeah. moves the cacao around. Big thing, like guys. That's cool. amazing. So this is a storage facility with all the, the dried Sorry, many just fell down, but this is where they would store all those seeds that are about to ship out. That's a big pallet. I've never seen a pallet that big. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh my God. It's crazy. Tower of cacao. Is this okay? Is it a video? Is that and okay? then I have to kill you. No, I'll tell you something, <laughs> look. They collect them and bring them to the collecting center, which is here. It's a beautiful, bright purple seed, right? Some people eat it raw. Like this guy. <laughs> Monkey man over here, I guess. Oh, oh, nice. Look at that. You know, and if you want, you can eat this just like an ice cream cone. 
you know, you're not gonna taste a whole lot if you're just licking it, but. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, everyone, I just wanted to go to a quiet place here to debrief a little bit. I know that was a crazy, crazy day. We have quite literally been here since 8 a.m. and it's been the entire day, right? Now we're headed to dinner right now. There was so much more to this farm than I actually thought there would be. And actually think about the final product, right? Think about a chocolate bar sitting on the shelf in a store. And suddenly we found ourselves in this massive, massive oasis of cacao everywhere. I just want to take a moment to kind of almost debrief and think about just the experience that we had, just to see the kind of behind the scenes, behind those mysterious walls of all this stuff that ultimately makes it into one of the most common products you could possibly think of in the entire world. No one's really ever shown anything like this behind the scenes. So I'm really happy and I'm really fortunate that we got to do this. So we can't take any of these home in our bag because it's it's illegal, but I am gonna ship some of these back home and we're gonna make chocolate, but we literally just came to Ecuador. So I wanna say thank you to all of you that are watching because you're the ones that make this kind of thing possible. I mean, you are the reason that we were literally just able to fly, come to Ecuador from Boston. Now we're going back home and we're making chocolate. Doesn't get more homemade than this. So we'll see you back in Boston. Yes, I did just get back from Ecuador. We really did just go all the way there and come right back to this kitchen. And look, I brought some beans and more importantly, some pods with me. Unfortunately, I couldn't take the pods on the plane because they just weren't letting us on with them. But we shipped 18 pods right behind us, so they got here perfectly in time. Man, these boxes are big. To start, let's take off this lid here. I know that every time we get cacao pods, they're really well packaged because they're actually quite delicate. Now, when we open these things up, inside each wrap will be one of the pods from the exact farms that you just saw. Because of shipping, some of them are gonna be cracked like this already. But if I go inside, you all now know what cacao should look like. And the fact that it's really juicy and slippery like that means it's nice and fresh. I absolutely love the fact that they're all different colors, shapes, and sizes. They really are beautiful. And looking at all these already makes me really miss that incredible, incredible farm we visited. Now that we've opened that first box, let's remove the second lid. I find it just so incredibly amazing, somewhat magical, one might say, at how incredible these things are. Who could have ever thought that this is what makes chocolate? Fortunately, it looks like most of the pods were okay in transit. So at this point, we're ready to crack a bunch open and begin that fermentation process. Now, after we finally removed all these cacao pods from their protective casing from that shipping, I want to take a really quick moment to show you all those colors again. We have some of those beautiful orange yellowish ones. Then perhaps my favorite are those rainbow ones with green, yellow, orange, and red on them. And of course, we have some of those deep red ones that have some darker black spots on them. But now, it's time to have some fun and open all of these up so that we can begin the fermentation process that's gonna take us about a week. First things first, it's time for some karate chop action. Here we go. Oh, clean as cut, yeah, look at that. Right down the middle, perfect shock all the way through the whole pod. That right there is a karate chop, and I'm not even gonna do any more because that's the best I can do. Now, I'm gonna crack this bad boy open. It does look like I messed it up a tad bit by hitting it too hard, but it looks absolutely gorgeous. Let me get a paper towel real quick. Bro, what are you doing? You're fired, you just ate half the pod. Spit it out. At this point, I'm gonna use my knife like a normal person to open up the rest, wedging them all open, such that we can easily take off these seeds and start fermenting. So give me a few minutes while I crack all these open. Once we've gotten all of our alien-like pods open and separated, I'm gonna go ahead and put these all on a big tray, and then it's time for perhaps what is my favorite part, squeezing them all out. Just take a listen. We just wanna take all of the seeds out and put them on our tray here so that they can then sit and ferment for a week. And this is what ultimately will give them those flavors that we all expect in chocolate. Now, it's true that if we just roasted these seeds right away in our kitchen, the entire room will actually smell like a chocolate bar. But fermenting actually develops things. It brings out the flavor that you're otherwise not gonna have. As we separate off all these seeds, we're gonna leave behind this stem in each of our pods, which we really have no need for right now. However, all of this stuff behind me, I'm gonna to toss in my garden as compost to try to get some flavor in there as well. Once we finally squeeze these all into our tray. It's now time to spread all of these out and set these aside for a week to ferment. I'm gonna be keeping a really close eye on these for the next week to make sure that there's no mold that develops and I'll try to update you to make sure you're looped in as well. After about a week of fermentation, the seeds have changed quite a lot. Unfortunately, during the process, some of them started getting a little bit of mold at one point. So I rinsed them off with a little bit of alcohol, put them back and they seem to be fine. Now, the first thing you're hit with with these is this overwhelming smell of alcohol, that really fermented aroma that we smelled on the farm in Ecuador. The other part of this is the fact that they are really gooey. You can see that when I open up these gloves, there's just all this goo there. And again, that's the same thing we saw at the farm in Ecuador. At this point in time, it's time for the roasting process. So after mixing these around just a little bit, I'm simply gonna lay them out flat and toss them in the oven. And at this point, I'll roast these bad boys at 300 degrees Fahrenheit until they're a deep brown color and have been fully roasted. Not on my flip-flops. What are you doing? And finally, at this point, they are all fully roasted. 
Now, these seeds right here, at this point, smell like a perfect mixture between vinegar and chocolate. And I know that sounds really strange, but like we talked about before, that's how you get that flavor. And now that these seeds have all been roasted, it's time for what's gonna be the most hands-on part of what we're doing today, which is breaking all these seeds open and getting those nibs out. Now we're gonna put all these cacao seeds into a bag because crushing them up in a bag is gonna be a lot better than trying to individually crush them all on our cutting board. What's gonna happen here is this. When we crush all these open together, we're gonna be separating the shell and then what's inside. All these beautiful cacao nibs, which will be used to make chocolate. Now it's time you get a rolling pin and pretend that what's in this bag is someone you really don't like. I'm pretty good with a rolling pin. Stop. What are you doing? At this point, we smash. And now, after we've been smashing for quite some time, we'll pour the contents back onto our tray. And as you can see here, we've got a nice mixture of shells and nibs. At this point in time, we'll take a quick pause and I'm gonna separate out all the nibs from the shells. All right, cut the cams for a sec. Yeah. All right, um, you're gonna separate all these out real quick. I'm gonna take a bubble bath really fast, all right? Yeah, all right. Are you still filming? No. Dude, you're fired. Are you done? Yeah, yeah. All right. Don't film me, don't film me. At this point, after about an hour of separating all of these cacao nibs out, we have our roasted nibs. In general, I'm sure some of you have seen these before. They often put them on top of things like smoothie bowls, acai bowls, that kind of thing. But we all actually know them from being liquefied into chocolate liqueur, which is ultimately transformed into all the chocolate bars you know and love. Now, we're ready to start grinding, and I'm super excited because we have a real stone grinding machine here with us right now. Just before we roast, I want to show you a perfectly peeled cacao bean here. It's beautiful and looks just like a dinosaur egg. So this right here is the whole bean without the shell. And then when I crush it, we have all those nibs. I am very excited about this machine right here because this is a stone grinder. These beautifully polished stones on the inside are gonna go for hours and hours to grind those cacao nibs into the perfect, perfect smooth chocolate that we're looking for. Before I put anything in there, watch these spin for a minute. Now it's finally time. I'm gonna start dumping these cacao nibs slowly into here and let them start to grind up. But this machine is really loud, so I may not be able to talk while I'm doing it. To start, we're gonna let these grind for a little while to let the first small bath start to get broken up. Then we'll add more. We've been letting it go for about five minutes now and this is what it looks like. Again, I've turned off the machine because it's really loud. But if you look in for a second, it's almost like we have a slightly rough peanut butter consistency right now. But for now, I'll fire it back up and continue adding nibs. I've turned this off again because of how loud it is, but at this point we're gonna add those last cacao nibs into our machine here. As we can now get from the bottom, that chocolate has become even softer and smoother, and we're slowly getting to the point that we could add our final flavorings and then turn it into a bar. For now, I'll turn it back on. At this point, once it's almost a liquid, we're gonna start adding our sugar. The sugar's gonna have to go in bit by bit so that it slowly sort of melts and combines itself into that chocolate. Now finally, we have this beautiful liqueur here. It's a really soft, smooth, beautiful consistency at this point. As you can see here from my rubber spatula. Let's take out a nice big scoop of this chocolate and just look at that chocolate. We have just made this from cacao pods. Once our chocolate's finally done mixing, I'm gonna tilt the machine all the way over so that it can slowly drizzle into our chocolate mold. I'm slightly skipping a step here by not going through the full process of tempering the chocolate, but you'll see that we'll get a smooth chocolate bar with a nice crack regardless. Once we let all that chocolate flow into this beautiful mold here, we'll let it spread through our chocolate mold. This looks incredibly good. At this point, we'll run a bench scraper across all the chocolate, making sure that our whole bar will be perfectly level. And once we've cleaned off all these edges, we'll set it aside to cool. Now for our milk chocolate bar, we're gonna go ahead and sprinkle in a little bit of milk powder across our cacao and let this blend again. And now we'll pour in our milk chocolate and repeat the same process that we did with the dark chocolate bar. Once we've given that chocolate some time to rest, here it is. This is my favorite part of the entire process. The classic moment of truth as you pull back the mold. As you can see, we have a beautifully smooth bar of chocolate here. It's got a fantastic shine on it. And the thought of having this come all the way from cacao pods from Ecuador is really, really cool. We certainly did take one or two shortcuts throughout this process, primarily in the name of just moving this along. But I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. And now it's time to make sure that we get that nice classic snap. Here we go. Our milk chocolate also looks absolutely gorgeous. And I have to say, I'm really proud of how this came out. But there's only one way to know how truly good this is. So here we go. 
First, you must let that chocolate melt slowly on your tongue and let it slowly melt with the heat of your mouth. Once that beautifully soft cacao and cocoa butter begin to melt across your tongue, you'll begin to pick up all those flavors. This chocolate is, not surprisingly, absolutely delicious. It was such an incredibly fun trip and I hope you learned something about how all this stuff works. I mean, it really is crazy that most of us have no idea where any of this kind of thing comes from. I'll try to think of more examples that we can go and show you firsthand to really give you an insight into where some of your food comes from. But I'll first pause to say one quick thing that I'm really excited about. Before we close things out, I want to take a moment to give you a great offer. And before you go, this is not a sponsorship. This is purely me having talked to Blue Stripes, the company that so kindly brought me on this trip. And I asked them to pick out all my favorites and make a box that you could get. So they are quite literally offering this to you at the cheapest price possible. I'll have a link in the description below, but if you click that link and enter promo code FLYCACAO, F-L-Y-C-A-C-A-O, you'll get 20% off. This will be $35 plus shipping. And what's inside are one of each of the types of the cacao water that they have, one cacao pod, which I imagine will be quite exciting for a lot of people, and some of these chocolate hazelnut bars that are absolutely delicious. It's basically just a healthy candy bar. Again, I really wanted to put something together to give you what I experienced on this trip, and this will give you virtually all of those flavors, fresh from the farm in Ecuador. Now, I know it's been a long video, but to finally close things out, I wanna first say a big thanks to everyone who did help make this trip possible, because it was quite a production. And now, I wanna encourage you to go down and smash that like button, because that's what keeps us going, and don't forget to subscribe. If you're watching right now and you're already subscribed, make sure you hit the notifications icon. Just take a quick second to do that because you do not want to miss what's coming soon. See you later.